With all of this, it seems that this man was only in this field. All he knew was fiqh and hadith and whatever else, but this is only he knew, all this is all he knows about. But amazingly, when you look at the other part of his life, you will see a life full of ibadah. Subhanallah. People who are in the field, they know how difficult it is for us to keep both of these together. A person who is busy documenting the fiqh, and he is the first person who started it, and he is the amir, he is the leader for that, and he is the teacher. How busy he would be. But this is a man about whom it was known that never takes him more than three days to finish one Qur'an. He recites ten juz every day of his life. During the month of Ramadan, every day two Qur'an. Sixty Qur'an during the month of Ramadan this man would recite. There are only four people who are known to have finished Qur'an al kareem the complete Qur'an, in one rak'ah inside the Kaaba. Two of the Sahaba, two of the Tabi'een. Of the Sahaba, Uthman bin Affan and Tamim al-Dari radiyallahu anhu. Of the Tabi'een, Sa'id bin Jubair and Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. Only four people are known to have finished the whole Qur'an in one rak'ah inside the Kaaba. You would think, where is he getting all of this time from? There was one of the great muhaddisin, well known, a person who studies the hadith, knows this name, Mus'ar ibn Kidam, rahimahullah. He was the teacher of Imam Bukhari's teacher, and the student of Imam Abu Hanifa. He was one of the 40, in the, in the, the, uh, in the committee of the 40 people, who used to discuss the rulings before they would document them. Mus'ar ibn Kidam, rahimahullah. Well-known muhaddis. He says, when I started going to Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, I saw him that after Salat al-Fajr, after the sun rises, he sits with the students. And he sits there up to the time of Salat al-Dhuhr. Then after Salat al-Dhuhr, he sits with the students up to Asr. From Asr to Maghrib, Maghrib to Isha. I said to myself, this man is too busy with just teaching. He has no time for ibadah. When does he perform any ibadah? And I have heard that this person performs a lot of ibadah. He recites so much Quran, he does so much of this. I don't see none of that. This is what Mus'ar ibn Kidam says. He says that I decided that I'm going to wash this man during the night. Also, he must be needing a lot of rest. Must be very tired after all of this work. From Fajr till Isha. He's busy with his students. So, he must be having a good rest at night time. So when does he perform the ibadah? He says, it was the first day for me over there. So I stayed in the, I stayed in the masjid. When all the people left the masjid, I saw Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, and I was in the corner of the masjid. He didn't see me. He came into the masjid. But now when he came, he had some nice dress on him. With a lot of fragrance, beautiful perfume that he has on him. And then he finds out to tell us that this was a secret about Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, something that he also used to encourage others to do, that he used to say, for tahajjud, for standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in night time, you should have some very nice dress, better than what you wear in front of people. He says he came into the masjid, and he started reciting Quran in the salah. I said to myself, let me watch for how long he's going to recite. He continued reciting. And he recited five juz. I said, now he may be finishing it now. He finishes ten juz. I said, now. He went into the rukur after fifteen juz. And he continued reciting Salat al-Tahajjad until it was the time for Adhan al-Fajr. Before the Mu'addin would come for Adhan al-Fajr, he went home. Changed his clothes came back for Salat al-Fajr, just like any other normal person. No one knew that this man spent the night in the masjid. He said, I said to myself, this is temporary. Of course, he's doing it today. He can't afford to do this every day. Next day, he's going to be having a good rest tomorrow. He'll be sleeping the whole day. 
next day, he is as fresh in the class as he was the day before. And he spent the whole day with us. Night time, again, after everyone left, I see him coming into the masjid, the hajjid, up to the time of fajr. Before the adhan of fajr, he leaves, he goes home. And then he comes back after the adhan, just like any other person. So no one knows he was in the masjid before that. Subhanallah. He said, I watched him for the third day. And it was the same thing the third day. So I had no choice but to go and knock at his door when he was not home. Someone came out. I asked the person that this is the house of Imam Abu Hanifa. Yes. Just tell me one thing. When does he sleep? <laughs> tell me when does he sleep? When does he go to sleep? They said, do you see him leaving just before the Adhan of Zuhr? Yes. He comes and he, has a, he gets a little nap at that time. That's all he sleeps. That's the only time that he sleeps. And as the fuqaha, as the scholars around him who watched him very closely have narrated that for 40 years this was his daily schedule. For 40 years this was his daily schedule. He spends the, he spends the whole day with the people and he spends the night in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only time he would have some rest was just before <laughs> Salat al-Zuhr. Barakah in the time. Barakah in the sleep. In the short period of sleeping, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a lot of barakah for him. Just like a person from Makkah Mukarramah whose name was Salim bin Salim. He is from the progeny of Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu. He says that when, um, when Abu Hanifa rahimahullah came to Makkah Mukarramah, he stationed at my home. Throughout the time he was in Makkah Mukarramah, not a single day I saw him sleeping. I watched him very closely day and night. I have never seen him sleeping except a little nap before Salat al-Zuhr. And the rest of the time when I would go, he said, there were only two people that I have seen of that cal uh, caliber and of that category. One was Imam Abu Hanifa, the second Sufyan al thawri Whenever I go to the masjid, either they are uh, doing tawaf or they will be performing salah. One of the two things. I have never seen these people out of these two ibadahs. Imam Abu Hanifa and Sufyan al thawri rahimahullah. This is the ibadah of these people. That's something that we think that this person who's busy with all of this, he may not have time. But remember, that was the barakah. All of the barakah in their time was through that ibadah. All of that understanding was through that ibadah. It's not just sitting with books and then giving talks and just giving fatawa and just being out there. No ibadah of the night time that they learned from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, he set a rule in his gathering that when people were not able to understand a ruling and come up and find the solution for, it, for in the light of Quran and Hadith, he would say, it might be because of some of my sin. Right away he would do istighfar and sometime he will get up and perform two raka'a salah. And then... He would come back and sit with people and ask them to restart the situation and start thinking, uh, reconsider that situation, and they would find a solution for it. When Fudayl bin Ayaz, rahimahullah, he knew about this, he started crying, and he said, this is a man who had no sin, so whenever he would sin, he would feel it, and right away he would get it washed. And we have so many that we don't even feel it after committing it. This is the barakah of the ibadah. This is something that we really need to learn from the life of these scholars of Islam. All of them, something very common in the life of all of these uh, scholars of Islam, regardless of which field they worked in. Ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Spending the time before Allah. Perform, getting up during the night time. Sacrificing the rest and praying to Allah. Reciting Quran. Performing Salat of Tahajjud. Begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making dua, and istighfar, seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness, that will keep their hearts and their records clean, so that they have the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
because of this alm, because of this taqwa, because of this understanding. Rulers wanted 